All right, everybody, welcome back to class. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the first part of chapter 14, which is looking at the chemistry of gases. And so let's go ahead and start our notes. Um, so we'll start off with the overall topic, which are gases. And we know from what we had watched previously with Tyler DeWitt and his film is that gases are described using the kinetic molecular theory. And the kinetic molecular theory as it applies to gases allows us to visualize what the particles of the gas are doing and how that affects the various characteristics of the gases. So what are some characteristics of gases that we're going to be studying? Okay, so let's go ahead and put them up here. So we might be looking at the pressure of a gas. Okay, um, we might be looking at the volume. Oops, come on, Ben. The volume of a gas. Okay, we might be studying the temperature of a gas. Okay. And we could also be looking at the amount of the gas. And when we talk about the amount of the gas, we're talking about the number of moles of the gas, not, not the volume. A lot of times students get confused with the word amount, and they think that's the same thing as volume, but it's not. The amount means the number of molecules that are there. So these four... Uh, descriptors are what we would call the basic characteristics of gases and this is what we're going to be trying to predict um, these what happens to these characteristics if we change one of the four for example if we increase the pressure on a gas what happens to its volume what about if we increase the temperature on a gas what happens to its pressure and so you can look at any combination of these characteristics if you understand how the kinetic molecular theory works. So let's put down some of the ideas of the kinetic molecular theory. Okay, As it applies to gases, the kinetic molecular theory says that gas particles don't affect each other. Okay, so let me clarify that a bit. That means that gas particles are so far apart from each other that intermolecular forces do not apply. So you don't see hydrogen bonding between gas molecules. You don't see dipole-dipole interactions. So they, it's almost as if every gas molecule doesn't even know that there are others around it because they are so far apart they don't attract or affect each other. And what kind of goes along with that is the idea that gas particles are tiny okay um, compared to the distance between them okay so they're very very small compared to how far apart they are okay um, now kind of some of the really important ones here According to the kinetic molecular theory, gas particles are always in motion. Okay? And it's this amount of motion, okay? It's this kinetic energy of the gas particles that is the temperature of the gas. Okay? So the average amount of movement, the average amount of kinetic energy, that's what we call the temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little puffy cloud around this one because this becomes very important later on when we start to predict what's going to happen uh, when we change some of these factors. Okay, And then there's one last one because there's five parts to the kinetic theory for gases. The last one is that when the gas particles hit each other, they have what are called elastic collisions with each other, meaning that they don't lose any energy when they bump into each other or when they bump into the walls of the container. Okay? 
So if we can keep those ideas in our head as we start to talk about the relationships between temper, temperature and pressure and volume and the number of moles, if we can kind of vi envision that in our brains, these little tiny gas particles always moving, bumping into each other but not losing energy, then we can start to make predictions about their behavior, the gases' behavior, okay? Now, to let the cat out of the bag, I am going to be showing you a couple of films uh, in the future that have animations with these little particles moving around so you can kind of visualize and, and then see what happens when gas particles are put under greater pressure or heated up. Um, but for right now, we just got to keep it as a little um, visualization in our brain, okay? All right. So one of the really great things about the kinetic molecular theory, it has allowed us to create some what we call gas laws, which are uh, mathematical relationships between these four different gas characteristics, okay? And so I'm only going to put down one today because we're only going to focus on one today and then we're going to come back and we'll start looking at some of the other ones here. But today, um, we're going to be studying the, the one of the very first one, which is called Boyle's Law. Okay? All right. So, Boyle's Law examines the two gas characteristics of pressure. Pressure. <laughs> versus volume. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, Robert Boyle, what he was studying was what happened to a gas if you changed the pressure, what happened to the volume, okay? Um, and so what I mean by that is, I want you to imagine um, that you have what we would call a cylinder, okay? And then inside the cylinder is a piston. Okay, you can see it's right here. All right, so this is this is the piston. And this piston, you can push it down or you can pull it up. And what you do here is you're changing the volume. So if I was to push this down, okay, what it would look like now is it would be forced all the way down here. Okay, so there it is down at the bottom, all right? Um, and so what we would say, according to Boyle's Law, is we would say, this is volume number one, the starting volume, okay? So volume one means the starting volume. Sometimes people call it the initial volume, okay? And... Right here, I'm going to have to write this really small, but this is volume number two, okay? And volume number two is the final volume. So don't let this kind of get you confused. V1 is just the volume that you start with, and V2 is the volume that you end with. So now... Boyle was looking at what happens to pressure. So here's P1, right? And then this is going to be in here pressure number two. All right? So if I push this cylinder down, okay? I push it down. The pressure is obviously going to change inside of this uh, little volume. All right? Now think about it, you guys. Inside of volume number one, we have these gas particles, and they're moving around, okay? They're bumping around. They're hitting the sides. As we make the volume smaller, those gas molecules are going to hit the side more often, aren't they? It would be like if I took a whole class of 30 students in my classroom, and then I said, all right, we're all going to go into the boys' bathroom. And I forced all 30 of you into the boys' bathroom. Well, the boys' bathroom... The volume is smaller. Wouldn't all of those students be bumping into the walls more often? The answer is yes, right? Everybody would be like, I want out of here. And so that's pressure. So what we see with this is that as volume decreases, 
we see that pressure increases, okay? And this idea right here is the basis of Boyle's Law. He said that if you decide to change volume, well, then the pressure is going to change as well. And the relationship that exists between these two is what's called an inverse relationship. And an inverse relationship is when one thing goes up, the other goes down. Okay? In this case, what we see here is we see that as volume decreases, we see that pressure increases. Okay? So that's called an inverse relationship. All right. Now, how are we going to use this mathematically? And I know like this starts to make you nervous because you hear the, the four letter word math and you get confused and you get you get nervous. But but let's ease into it. Before I go any further, I want you to remember V1 is the starting volume. V2 is the final volume. And let's add another one here. P1 is the starting pressure and P2 is the final pressure. Okay? Just so that you can know. And I want to I want to give you a little bit more information just really quick. Some of the units for volume would be liters, okay? So liters which are symbolized with an L or milliliter, okay? These are some of the units for volume. And then for pressure, there are some crazy units here, but just bear with me. You could have atmospheres. You could have something called tor, or you could have something called a pascal, or you could have something called millimeters of mercury. Now, I know that sounds like a lot. We're going to take even more time to talk about those pressure units and those, those uh volume units, but I'm just putting this here for your reference so that you can look at it for later. Okay, so what is, it, we know that there's an inverse relationship, what is the mathematical formula for Boyle's Law? Here we go. It is P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And what you can do with this formula is you can solve problems where if you have three of the variables, you can solve for the fourth. And so the best way to get an idea of this is for us to do some problems. So we're going to go do, we're going to do three problems. And these three problems that I'm going to do um, are very similar to problems that you're going to see for your homework. So good thing you have these right now, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, so the volume of a gas at 20 kilopascal, okay, so right there, there's your pressure unit, all right, so I'm going to do this, this is pressure, okay, um, is 150.0 milliliters, okay, so you see that milliliters, I see milliliters right here, so I know that this is volume, okay, if the pressure is increased to 93.5 kilopascal, okay, so look, I'm going to go ahead and just circle this again. Look, here is pressure again, right? Then what will be the new volume? Ah, well, there you go. We're going to be solving for, I'm sorry here, guys, just bear with me. We're going to be solving for the new volume. Okay, all right, so look how many things you know. You know this pressure, you know that's that volume that goes with it, and you know this pressure here. And what you're solving for, what you're looking for is, oops, let me fix this. What you're looking for is the new volume. Okay. All right. Well, you've got pressure, volume, and pressure, so you know that you're going to use Boyle's Law. So when you solve a problem, always write down the, the formula first every time you do this. Okay. And now you need to find out what these things are. So P1 is the starting pressure. So the volume of a gas is 20 kilopascal. So that must be P1. All right, so this is P1 right here, P1. And, 
At 20 kilopascals, the volume is 150 milliliters, so this must be V1, right? And uh, what's the new pressure? So you increase to the pressure, so this must be P2, and you must be solving for the new volume, right? It says it right there, new volume, so that's V2. All right, so let's plug in the numbers. So P1 is 20.0 kilopascals, okay? V1 is 150.0 milliliters, okay, equals P2, the new pressure, there it is, is 93.5 kilopascals. And then we're going to be solving for X, right, which is V2. So V2 is, is going to be what we're looking for, all right? Okay, so this is, this is really easy now. It's an easy math problem. One thing I want you to check is to make sure that the pressure units are the same so they cancel out. So we've got kilopascals and kilopascals. That's good. And then we've got milliliters for volume. And so our answer then is going to be in milliliters because there's nothing to cancel out that unit of milliliters. So let's do the math for this. Okay. So what I like to do is to just kind of set it up and clean it up. We want to, we want to get rid of 93.5 kilopascals from the X, right? So we're going to divide by 93.5 kilopascals, all right? And what that's going to do is, remember, if you divide this, this is going to cancel out and that's going to cancel out, right? So what are you going to have left over on this side? You're going to have X. But don't forget, if you, if you divide on the right, you also have to divide on the left. So here we go, 93.5 kilopascals. Okay, and then so let's 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 see what cancels out now. Okay, so I have kilopascals kilopascals here. Those cancel out because they're down here. They're gone. So now I've got 20 times 150 divided by 93.5. So let's get out our calculators. I've got mine right here. So 20 times 150 equals, I have 3,000, and now I'm going to divide 93.5 equals, and the answer you get, and I'm going to round this to three significant figures, so I'm going to, I'll write it all the way out, it's 32.08, and we want three significant figures, so it's 32, we're going to round to there, so look at that. 32.1, okay? But don't forget this unit. There it is. Nothing canceled it out, so we're going to put it down here is equal to X. There's your problem, okay? So what did we find out? Let's look at what we solved for. So we took, we took a volume of gas at... Um, uh, 20 kilopascals and we increased the pressure on it meaning that we pushed down on it and we made it um, we had to like force it down right we increased the pressure we squeezed it so what would you predict would happen to the volume remember it's inverse right so if you increase the pressure you decrease the volume and look what it did it went from 150 all the way to 32.1 and that is the simplest kind of Boyle's Law form, um, problem that we just solved. Your homework tonight, you're going to be getting more problems exactly like this. And you're going to have, oh, maybe three or four of them. Solve them exactly the same as we did here. And use this as an example. The next time we meet, we'll be doing more problems. We'll be talking about those units. But for today, this is enough. And please use this recording to help you to solve Boyle's Law problems.